Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today something different. I'm going to be taking a look at the Hobby King Bonsai 2 Flying Wing. But before I go any further, I just want to put my thanks out there to Lee from Painless360. He has kindly sent this in for me to take a look at. And I'm sure most of you are already subscribed to Lee, but I'll link him in the below. You definitely should check out his channel. Now, some of you might be surprised to know that most of my experience is in fixed wing. I've been flying for around about 27 years and it's only the last four years that we've had quadcopters that I've been doing quadcopters and the reason for that is I don't have the space for fixed wing. I wish I had more space because there'd be a lot more of it on the channel and that is what attracted me with this guy because its wingspan is only 600 millimeters. It is really small. It's hard to show how small it is on camera but I really like that about it. And in the old days, you couldn't really have small models like this. You'd have to put a glow engine on them and they'd be really unstable. But now they are light, they can have brushless motors, and they are really stable. So I'm looking forward to checking this guy out. So let's look at some of the other specs. It says here the flying weight is 100 grams to 140 grams. It says the length is 383 millimeters. So yeah, it is very compact. This is the plug and fly version in blue. So all you have to do is add your receiver and a battery and you're ready to go. And there's even a bit at the front as well so you can add an FPV camera. Let's take a look at it. So the wing is made out of EPP foam. It's a very strong and durable material. We have got carbon spars down here and some carbon reinforcements along here as well. And I think we've got a fiberglass mount here for an FPV camera. And then this is a cable tie to keep that in. So you could use one of those little all-in-ones on the top of there. And we have got various holes through the top so you can feed stuff through. And we have a cable tie going around here and the option to cable tie your receiver around there as well. We have got a carbon fiber motor mount and the motor is a 1808-2400 kV, and we have got a spinner on there as well. The servos, they are 9 gram, and as I say, it all comes already built like this. We've got some ply on there for reinforcement, and those are screwed in. We've got a fiberglass horn here, and we have, I think, let's have a look... I think this might be a carbon rod as well. And there's going to need to be some adjustments here, you know, take the servo off when everything is centered and then maybe adjust this at the back here as well on both sides. But yeah, quality seems really nice. Let's take a look underneath. So we have got a, another plywood plate here for your battery. And then we have got a battery strap. So I've already added my receiver. I'm going to go for the D4R2. It's an old one that I'm not using, but this is going to be PWM, of course. So that's why I'm using that. The ESC is a YEP 18 amp. It says it takes a 2 to 4S battery, but I don't think the motor is going to support that. They advise that you run it on a two cell battery from 350 milliamp to 600 milliamp. So I'm going to be trying that. The ESC has a built-in capacitor. You don't really see that anymore, do you, on quadcopters? But it's there on this ESC. And then the ESC has an XT60 connected to it. You are given a JST connector up here as well. I don't know whether this is a plain world thing, but I would usually expect an XT30 for a model running a two cell. I don't think I've got any two cell batteries running an XT60, so I can use a conversion adapter for that. It's not a big deal. And then you get these three servo wires. So yeah, it's going to be a three channel and I've got that plugged into the D4R here. And yeah, I can use a cable tie to strap that down and maybe a little bit of tape for my antenna going out there. But this is the way that I have got it plugged up. So I've got the throttle, which is this longer one there. The throttle is going into channel one, and then I'm using channels two and channels three for the ailerons, alevons. And I'm going to be using my Tyrannus, and there's a very nice wizard in the Tyrannus when you set up a new model. 
and it will do all the mixing for you so there's no work to be done there whatsoever all i'm gonna have to do is bind this go through the wizard and it'll be pretty much set up the only thing i'm going to do is add a couple of millimeters of up tilt i think on the elevator and hopefully it should fly nicely other stuff that you get of course we have got the winglets those are going to have to be glued on the prop it is a gem fan bullnose it's a 6040 prop so i'm going to need to put that on we have some wing tape as well and that is to go along the leading edge here so that when you take an impact it does less damage we've got some cable ties in there and as i mentioned there's a jst connector in there as well it seems like a really nice fun little model okay so i've put this thing together we've got the receiver in place i've checked the fail safe very important to set that and i've put the wing tape on just a small criticism the wing tape isn't very wide so i doubled it up to make it wider and then there wasn't enough for the back it's important to put it on the back because in my experience you're going to have a few crashes and when the prop strikes it's going to go into the foam so just a small criticism there now in order to meet the center of gravity which is here 140 millimeters from there I have had to use a three cell battery just as weight that's not being used there. I guess the idea is that you're gonna have an FPV system up the front for extra weight. So yeah, I'm running off a two cell battery. It's a rubbish Zop two cell battery, but it's all I have. I've got a adapter here for the XT60. I've got a little buzzer thing there, but I'm probably not gonna connect that up because I imagine the first flight is going to be a crash. I've got a little bit of up tilt on here and I need to go over there because the wind is blowing that way, so let's get and do that next. Whoa, there she goes. I think I have still a little bit too much up trimming. Where's the rudder? <laughs> oh man, it's getting dark here. It's so windy. Yeah, I think it's still a little bit tail heavy, even with all that stuff at the front. Let's have a look what my trimmer's doing. Yeah, still needs more nose weight, but that's good really, because if you want to put like, say, a Mobius at the front or something like that, like a Mobius Mini, then it can put up with it. You know, 2S and I'm just like not going above 50% throttle and that's on a windy day but yeah it's going to be difficult to do a full throttle run and it's raining <laughs> yeah it needs more nose weight interestingly because that, that's bang on where the instructions say it should be but it flies, even in horrible gusty winds and rain, it flies. I'm gonna get a smooth landing. I'll take it. So sadly, the battery died on my GoPro at that point, which is why you just saw the landing. But I did take a load of batteries out with me, so I flew them all, and unfortunately, I did break a prop. So if you're unlucky and the prop is vertical, when you land, then it will break. And I had quite a few rough landings with it, and what actually happened was the plywood here, it actually broke. So what I did was I went on Thingiverse, and I went and printed off a TPU mount for it. I think that is inevitable. They do give you this bit of foam here, and I think it is designed to protect your battery like that and you have to cut it down however i do still think that that plywood is going to break so i would say that that would be a good modification to do and also if you are planning on flying this guy just line of sight then you need 
a lot more weight at the front than the recommended battery size. So I think they say 350 milliamp to a 650 milliamp. And I was using a 550 milliamp three cell battery just to compensate for the weight. So I think that's a good thing because this guy is designed to do FPV so we can have a fairly hefty FPV rig up the top here and not have to worry about the weight. They said the center of gravity was 140 millimeters and with this, so this is a 550 milliamp two cell battery and a 550 milliamp three cell battery, it was still needing more nose weight. And that was with my trim fully down. So actually no up tilt at all on these control surfaces. So definitely bear that in mind. You know, this is a durable model, so it'll take quite a beating, but it does have its limits. And there you go. That is my video on checking out the Hobby King Bonsai 2. I'm going to do more content with it. I'm going to add an FPV system up the front there. So look out for that. And once again, thank you to Lee from Painless360 for sending this to me. So as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.